Today in the news, we got Intel being real and even more cancellations. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Before we start, let me give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, NordPass. It's a next gen password manager available for all of your devices. If you're tired of typing your password every time you visit a website, or are just tired of having to come up with new and especially secure passwords for everything, NordPass has got you covered. Go get 50% off NordPass at nordpass.com boot, or use the code boot at checkout. It's only $2.49 a month, plus you get an additional month for free. Let's get started with Intel. On March 2nd, the company held a webcast with George Davis, the CFO of the company, and an analyst from Morgan Stanley, Joe Moore. During the webcast, Intel CFO seemed to want to temper expectation on their upcoming 10 nanometer products. When asked about the next nodes, specifically about 10, 7, and 5, he was told that he wasn't allowed to speak on performance, which makes sense. But he also had this to say. But as we said back in our analyst day in May of 19, look, this just isn't going to be uh, the best node uh, that Intel has ever had. It's going to be less uh, productive than 14, uh, less productive than 22, but uh, we're excited about the improvements that we're seeing, uh, and uh, we expect to start the 7 nanometer period and at a, with a much better profile of performance over that starting at the end of 21. So yeah, not the best news for Intel. Now George said that they already said that back in May of last year, but I don't see any record of that, or at least not in the way that he's putting it. Another point that was touched on is Intel accelerating the overlap between the move from 10 nanometers to 7 and from 7 to 5. Now since Intel is sticking to the end of 2021 for 7 nanometers, it seems that the acceleration probably won't take effect until 7 nanometer is out, which puts Intel in a bad spot for at least the next two years, since AMD will already be at 5 nanometers in 2021, or at least they should be. So what does this mean for uh, desktop chips? Well, not much. Unfortunately, we already have a pretty good idea of what's to come with Intel. The 10th generation, as we know, is a 14 nanometer refresh, and according to roadmap leaks and rumors, the 11th gen should be a backport of Tiger Lake in to 14 nanometers. So even in 2021, desktop chips should still be at 14 nanometers. This is where all the rumors of Intel skipping 10 nanometers for desktops and going straight to seven make a ton of sense, even though Intel denies it. At least we'll be able to observe the mobile chips first in the next two years to see where things are going in terms of IPC and clock speeds for seven nanometers and lower. In show and event news, another bunch of them have been either canceled or moved to an online format. A few hours after my last video went live, GDC was officially canceled. Shortly after, GTC has been moved to an online format only. And now we have Google's biggest event of the year being canceled too, Google I.O. and others like the Adobe Summit and F8. Some companies are even pulling out of South by Southwest like Facebook, Twitter, and Intel. I'll leave a link to a ZDNet article that keeps track of all this. So what does this mean for the uh, news in the next couple of weeks? Well, it's going to be thin. Companies like Microsoft and Intel said that because of these event delays, they weren't able to talk about or do any kind of big announcements, which makes sense. Even with an online event, they just didn't want to spoil it. Next up, we got some power supply news. Back at Computex of 2019, Seasonic had a concept power supply called the Connect. It was basically a power supply with an extension box that could allow for shorter cable runs and less of a rat's nest in your computer's basement. Well, they're making it a product and it's called the Connect and it looks pretty cool. Personally, I really like it because if you get custom cabling and you have a case with tempered glass on the back, these cable runs would look great. Plus with the space saving in the basement, you might be able to slide a radiator or more drives down there. Of course, you could just buy a modular power supply and spend some time cable managing too. And now in gaming news, Riot Games' Project A finally has a name, and some gameplay footage too. The new game, which promises tight competitive gameplay, is called Valorant, or Valorant, or v Valorant. 
After watching the preview, I can see how it's basically a mix of CSGO, Overwatch, and Siege. I don't think this game is meant for hardcore CSGO players though. I think it's more meant to bring people in from other class-based FPSs into Valorant like Overwatch and Siege. Graphically, it looks alright, nothing fancy, kind of has a Paladin vibes in my opinion, and I signed up for the newsletter so as soon as the beta is out, I'll let you guys know. Go check it out, let me know what you think. Anyways guys, that is pretty much it for the catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you got any comments or questions, you know where to put them. That's down below in the comment section. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. You really gotta make me roll back there. I hate rolling my chair. Okay. <laughs>